It's 5 o'clock Wednesday. Welcome to Joyful Echo with Jean and Kathleen on Carolina Catholic Radio Charlotte, where we gather together as sisters in friendship to echo God's love. Now here are your hosts, Jean and Kathleen. Hey, ladies, this is Jean. Hey, it's Kathleen. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Hallelujah. (laughs) (laughs) I slipped up a couple times during Lent with that. I know. (laughs) Now we can say it freely. Yes, we can. And often. Freely and often. Y'all say that. It means victory. Victory. (laughs) And victory is ours. Praise you, Jesus. (laughs) I hope that you all enjoyed our golden nuggets during Lent. That was a lot of gold. That was a lot of gold and we were grateful to do that yes for you all too because we learned so much ourselves mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and we appreciated hearing we had a couple people um, who reached out to us with particular things that they wanted to convey or prayer intentions so for those of you who reached out and we reached back out to you please know that we continue praying for you it wasn't just limited to um, you know that last week of Holy Week if we said we were gonna pray for you we're still praying for those situations. And we are. And we feel clo- more um, closely united with you all after doing mm-hmm. those golden nuggets. Mm-hmm. Yes. We really yes. do. And so we are We on our way down. We, we get in the car. We drive on 77, 85. And we just start praying to the Lord and saying, Lord, what? these are your girls. What do you want us to talk about today? So mm-hmm. we really mm-hmm. feel, even though we can't see you, that you are present. Yes, yes. And it it very much, ladies, works that way, where Jean and I say, okay, you know, for today's show, here's what our topic is mm-hmm. going to be. But there are particulars that the Lord decides. Yes. And through the Holy Spirit, then guides this, our conversation. Absolutely. Because we almost go blank as the music is starting. <laughs> It's like we're clean, used to it. it cleans the slate. <laughs> but what? Lord, I hope you have us because I. <laughs> yes, but this, you know, for this show, because we started by saying Happy Easter. Yes. And sometimes you get this sense, or at least I, I think in our culture, I can speak for myself. There were times in my youth when I had that sense that there's all this build up in Lent. There's all this build up, and then Easter Day. And then that's it. It's like, it's it. Well, Mm. it it took some time, not that the church wasn't explaining it, but for me to grow and mature as Mm -hmm. a young person to realize that, no, 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 Easter is not a day. I mean, not only is it a liturgical season, Mm -hmm. which is longer Mm -hmm. than Lent, it's 50 days for Lent's 40 days. But beyond that, Easter day has an octave, ladies. So that means that for eight days, in terms of the life of the church, it is Easter day for eight all days. of those days, mm-hmm. for all of those days. So it's not that the church isn't proclaiming that. It's not that the church isn't teaching that. Oftentimes what's happening, at least what was happening in my life as a young person, is I wasn't living that truth. The truth was there. Right. Right. But I wasn't living it. No, no, no. And we're still learning how to live it. Oh, yes. Yeah, is... Well, what we're really doing, and we've talked about this before, mm-hmm. we, in many ways, are learning how life in heaven is going to be. Right. Exactly. So our heaven is starting now. This is like our apprenticeship That's right. <laughs> in some ways. That's right. And, and ladies, please be aware because there's incredible grace happening right now. It's like there's one huge party going on. Mm-hmm. What is the Lord speaking to you specifically? What is the Lord saying to you? What kind of grace is he pouring into your lives right now? That is Easter grace. Mm-hmm. Easter grace. That's right. Because there was something for you That's individually. Right. That's right. On Good Friday, there was something for you that was on that cross with the Lord. There was something for you that needed to be in that tomb. That's right. And there was something for you on Easter Sunday, all through this octave that is being given new life. That's right. What is it? Okay. For me personally, I'm just going to tell you because my Lent, it was nonstop 
just attacks. Bam, 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 bam. Little mm-hmm. ones. Yeah. Nothing major. And the little ones are almost worse because you cannot say, oh, this is huge. Right. No. It's like <laughs> yeah. little gnats that buzz around your head all the time and you're swatting them, you know, um, on a hot summer day. And so that was my Lent every day. And I noticed uh, the gnats came upon me yesterday, but what I noticed what was different was the grace that God had given me. Mm. And it was in this. It was in little annoyances of another. Okay, mm-hmm, we have mm-hmm. those in another. And generally speaking, before, I would be grumbling mm-hmm. about the other to maybe a good friend for her to help me and guide me and say, hey, let's look at this differently. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But this was the Easter grace. When I recognize the gnats flying around my head, when I let's call them gnats, this time the grace was there to say, okay, let's look at what's the best in this person. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The, let's look and see this differently. And I could feel my will cooperating with the grace of God. That was like, hallelujah, Easter grace. Mm -hmm. I noticed the difference. My challenge is to you all, don't let these next few days pass by without noticing that Easter grace. And not just noticing, but claiming it. You know, I know we're not talking about... um, the resurrection of Lazarus, obviously, when we're talking about Easter resurrection. But when the Lord raised Lazarus from the dead, he still had those bandages on, right? That's the, right. The, the mm-hmm. strips of cloth mm-hmm. that, that had him bound. Mm-hmm. Those had to be taken off. Mm. You know, so sometimes when we are experiencing resurrections, you know, in, in our spiritual life, we still are operating as if we're still closed in. Right. That those ba- bounds are still on us. And it's time to take them off. It is time and to live take in them off. The freedom of the resurrection. Yes. And one of the readings today I was meditating on in our gospel readings, this, the gospel readings this week, ladies, are filled with messages for you personally. And who does he appear to is Mary Magdalene. He's talking to woman, Mm -hmm. talking to woman. Well, this is very interesting. And this is what hit me today. In John's gospel, when he first sees Peter, he says, what are you looking for? Those were his first words to Peter out of his Mm -hmm. mouth. What are you looking for? Well, guess what he says to Mary Magdalene? Today, when she sees the angels, she's Mm -hmm. crying, she's weeping at the tomb. She turns around and she mistakes Jesus for the gardener. Mm -hmm. And he says, who are you looking for? The -hmm. first words out of of his mouth from the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Who are you looking for? Mm -hmm. That is profound because who are we looking for? We're looking for our Lord Jesus, and we're looking for him in a deeper way than last Easter. Mm-hmm. It's not the same Easter. It's no. a deeper Easter. No, it, it, always, it always is. If we are present, mm. if we have eyes to see and ears to hear, mm-hmm. we know. He mm. says, I make all things new. Mm-hmm. So this Easter is not last Easter. No, you're right. Or and, the Easter before that. And he's so personal. He says her name, Mary. And that's Mary. it. That's when mm-hmm. she recognizes that it's him. That's when she... Re- and, you know, I when I was listening to that, too, at Mass Gene, because I always had this sense of not being sure why she wouldn't recognize him, you know, why mm-hmm. she would think it was a gardener. But this morning at Mass, when I heard those words, I just had this visual, um, and I thank the Holy Spirit for how, giving me that visual, It's early in the morning. So I had this visual of her being in the tomb, which is going to be dark, Mm -hmm. and looking out. You know, she had looked at the angels who were in the tomb at the head and the foot of the, um, the stone where he had laid. And she now turns when she hears that voice and she's looking out now in the morning i'm thinking rising sun Mm -hmm. sun is coming in it's a bright light Mm -hmm. and that's how she could obviously mistake Mm -hmm. 
who was standing there mm-hmm. because the light is shining in her eyes where mm-hmm. she had been looking in darkness. And ladies, doesn't that happen sometimes? If we are focused for too long mm-hmm. on dark places in our own life, right? When when the Lord shines that light and we turn, we don't recognize him. We see that light in such stark contrast to the darkness we've been focusing on, but we don't see mm-hmm. him for who he is in the midst of that light because it's so bright and it takes time for our eyes to adjust. But it's that individual call. Uh-huh. It's him saying, in this case, he says her name. It's when he speaks your name, when he says something that goes right to your heart that lets you know, I'm not just a disciple. Uh-huh. I am his beloved, and it's at that that we respond, don't we, ladies? And you know what was so cool about Mary Magdalene is when she sees the angels, they're not fulfilling to her. She sees them. That's not who she wants. She wants Jesus, and she perseveres. And in her persevering, he calls her name. Mm -hmm. That's Mm -hmm. what he's saying to us, ladies. It is dark sometimes. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, I send you heavenly consolations, but you really just want me. Those aren't even good enough. Mm -hmm. It is Mm -hmm. me. So, Jesus, we ask you, say our name this Christmas. This Christmas. (laughs) Hello, (laughs) this Easter season. (laughs) Yes, yes. And he and he is. Yes. And he is. So, you know, take. Take that time for your eyes to adjust, and and that's that's okay. That's okay. Um, we we're almost to the break, Jean, and I know so it. at I least know when it. we get by the before we go <laughs> to break, we should tell <laughs> we should tell the ladies what we're going to be talking about after the break, which we thought we were going to be talking about a little bit longer than that, but the Holy Spirit had other <laughs> that's arrangements. Right. Um, we were going to talk about the fact that. In addition to this being the octave of Easter, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is the core of our faith. But on top of that, because the Lord, even amazing, is Mm -hmm. not enough. He's such a good giver of gifts. That this week is also the time for the novena to the Divine Mercy. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. Leading up to Divine Mercy Sunday on Sunday. So we're going to be talking about that after the break. So for those of you who are not really aware or only Mm -hmm. partially aware, hopefully we can bring some clarification or some new information. And for those of you who already are devoted to divine mercy, come on into this conversation in your in your heart as we just thank the Lord. Yeah, because there's so many promises with divine mercy. And it is the eighth day that is the ends the octave is divine mercy Sunday for our time. Yes, it is for our time. It's huge. And the promises are unbelievable. And we want to talk to that talk to you about that when we come back from our break. AM 1270 Catholic Radio Charlotte on the Carolina Catholic Radio Network. On air, online, and on the new Carolina Catholic Radio mobile app. Get involved and connect. Learn, love, and live your faith. CarolinaCatholicRadio.org. This is Tammy Harris. I am the founder and executive director of the Ursus Institute. We fight human trafficking both locally and abroad. I'm also a parishioner at St. Gabriel Catholic Church in Charlotte, as well as the Respect Life Coordinator there. I urge you to check out my website, www.ursusinstitute.net, or to reach out to me personally at my email email tammy at ursusinstitute.net. Ursus is Latin for bear and is spelled U-R-S-U-S. And my first name, Tammy, is T-A-M-M-Y. We're involved in many operations right now, such as opening a transitional home, 
for survivors in Western North Carolina were involved in a documentary about our work and about the realities of human trafficking both locally and abroad. We're also giving input into anti-human trafficking legislation involved in intel operations and rescue operations. There's many other things I'd like to share with you and there's many ways that you can get involved. So I urge you, please text me at 704-519-7901, email me at tammy at ursusinstitute.net, or check out our website, www.ursusinstitute.net. And again, Ursus is spelled U-R-S-U-S. And please be assured that this human trafficking nonprofit works against trafficking in a way that is aligned with Catholic social teaching. Thanks for your time, and I look forward to hearing from you. Hello, I'm Elsie Spady, the host of Healed and Restored. My show is dedicated to making a difference in people's lives by showing them how the healing of the body, mind, and spirit is possible and available to all God's broken children. I invite you to tune in every Sunday from 5 to 6 p.m. Each week, I invite a different guest, and together we discuss all the different facets of healing. Thank you for tuning in and for supporting the work at Carolina Catholic Radio. God bless. Hello, ladies. This is Kathleen. Welcome back. This is Joyful Echo, Easter week. We're so happy that you're with us. Before we went to break, we told y'all we spent a lot more time talking about Easter week because we cannot contain this joy. (laughs) No, we cannot. We've had chocolate too, so there you go. And on top of that, some chocolate, yes. But we are going to be talking to you in this segment specifically about Divine Mercy Sunday, which is coming up this Sunday. And the Novena to Divine Mercy, which is happening all this week, Um, all of this information about the Divine Mercy Novena, the chaplet, the image of Divine Mercy, was given by God's grace to St. Faustina. And she is a 20th century saint. She was born right at the beginning of the 20th century um, in Poland, another wonderful saint from Poland from the 20th century. And so, Jean, you're going to start us off with just some background information about how the Divine Mercy message was given to St. Faustina. Now, St. Faustina was um, a really cool young girl, and Jesus appeared to her just like he did to Mary Magdalene. Is that so? Just meditate on that, girls. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Jesus has not left us. He still appears to different saints and people in the world. And St. Faustina, he appeared to her in the early 1930s um, when she was a young girl. And at 17, she ran off after a vision. She was at a dance, and Jesus appeared to her with all his wounds. And he said, how much longer will you deny me? Because he had been asking her to become this beautiful, give her heart into to him in a religious vocation. And she kept denying him. So he appears to her at a dance. Isn't Jesus cool? And he says, come away with me. And she does. She leaves her family and everything and goes and joins these Sisters of Mercy. But what she did is she wrote down several of the messages that he gave her. And it's in a diary called The the Diary of Divine Mercy by St. Faustina. So it's a bunch of notebooks put together Mm -hmm. is what it is. And she wrote these things down out of obedience, Out of obedience. She didn't want to do it. No. So there is a message, and I'll read this. This is from Diary 1567. He says, Today, Jesus told her, I am sending you with my mercy to the people of the whole world. I do not want to punish aching mankind, but I desire to heal it, pressing it to my merciful heart. You are the secretary of my mercy. I have chosen you for that office in this and in the next life. Mm, I think I'm just going to pause right there, Jean. Did you hear that, ladies? He's chosen her for this mission, not just while she's on earth. Mm, that's right in this and the next life so what we were talking about or we alluded to in the earlier segment about how we are in training for heaven right right now i mean what he's calling you to right now that's a key to 
your eternal life, what your eternal kind of activity, if you want to call it that, yes. will be. I mean, it's beatitude before the Lord, but still. So this is for yes. all time. This, this is, is she's the secretary of his mercy for right. all eternity. Right. And the cool thing is they're trying to make her of a doctor of the church now, the Marians. Oh, Isn't that awesome? So let me finish the message. Yeah. He wanted, Jesus said to her, I want you to make known to souls the great mercy that I have for them and to exhort them to trust in the bottomless depth of my mercy. Well, this is huge, ladies, because we're like in the Super Bowl week of divine mercy and all these messages <laughs> yes. that he gave to St. Faustina. And we want to get them to you quickly, whet your appetite so you can go and look them up because there's incredible promises that are happening right now. And one is Sunday. We talked about the octave. Our octave ends with divine mercy Sunday. Yes. And Jesus gave the most simple promise to Faustina. And he said to her that in 1934, he told her, tell the whole world of my great mercy that whoever approaches the font of life on this day, and it's coming up on this Sunday, girls, and whoever goes to confession will be granted complete remission of sins and punishment due to sin. Mankind will not have peace until it turns with trust to my mercy. That's 300 in her diary. Mm -hmm. And ladies, let me just say, if you're hearing a voice right now that says, oh, that's, that's not how God works. That's not justice. You can't just say, oh, well, if you do this and this, then that's it. All the punishment of, for all the bad things that you've ever done gets wiped away. What, what about someone who's done really horrible, horrible things? That's not fair that that would happen. God doesn't work that way. Don't you listen to that voice. Mm -mm. And God can do whatever he wants, girls. <laughs> yes, he, yes he can. And he does. And he okay? does. This is Saint, Saint Faustina. This is not just some lady Jean and I, you know, met down the street and we think she's really holy. Right. We're, we're, we're talking about a canonized saint. Right. And he said to her... The whole point of Divine Mercy Sunday is to give the grace before the day of justice, because there will be a day of justice. Yes. There will be. Yes. So this is what he tells her. Tell the whole world about my inconceivable mercy. So if you're thinking in your mind right now, I don't get this. Well, Jesus says inconceivable it, it mercy. <laughs> That's right. He's already so he's clued just us confirming in. to you. Yeah, this is un inconceivable. Yes. I desire that the Feast of Mercy be a refuge and a shelter for all souls and especially for poor sinners. On that day, which is Sunday coming up, girls, the very depths of my tender mercy are open. I pour out a whole ocean of graces upon those souls who approach the font of my mercy. The soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion shall obtain complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. On that day, on that day are open all the divine floodgates through which my graces flow are opened. Let no soul fear to draw near to me. Yes, Even. ladies, it doesn't matter if you if you don't have a beautiful feeling when you go to confession leading right. up to Divine Mercy Sunday. If you God forbid, if you are in the confessional with a priest who's having a bad day and he says something unkind to you, none of those things negates the mercy that is being poured out on you. Floodgates, floodgates. Go look up what the Niagara Falls looks like. Floodgates. Floodgates. <laughs> floodgates. <laughs> and he says, draw near to me, even though your sins be as scarlet. My mercy is so great that no man, no mind be it of man or angel, will be able to fathom it throughout all eternity. The feast of mercy emerges from my very depths of tenderness. It is my desire that it be solemnly celebrated on the first Sunday after Easter. Mm -hmm. And this is six ninety nine in the diary. First yes. Sunday. And who brought in, yay, Divine Mercy <laughs> Sunday, my favorite saint, John Pope. Paul too. <laughs> Pope St. John Paul. Thank you. Thank and, you. Oh, my gosh. Just think of that, ladies. This is remedy for our world right now. Yes. Think about all the things that you have been complaining about during Lent. All the things that you have looked toward heaven and said, 
how, God, how can you let this happen? How can such evil exist in the world? Why is this happening? What are they up to? What, are, what is the point to this evil thing that's happening? All of those things, he is pouring out his mercy. Go to him. Take him up on these promises. That's right. Don't listen to that voice that says, oh, that's, that, that just doesn't make any sense. That It is inconceivable, he says, right? Go. I, I cannot mm-hmm. imagine, ladies, that any of us will get to the throne of God when we die and find out that he's not as merciful as we thought. And this not going to happen. Right. And this is the cool thing. We are in the middle to, it started on Good Friday, the Divine Mercy Chaplet. This is a set of prayers the Lord gave to St. Faustina as well to bathe the whole world in his mercy. So what is this chaplet? This chaplet is nine days long. And each day when you pray the chaplet, you're praying and asking God's mercy to flood a particular people. Of that day. And today, with the day we're recording, is bringing to the Lord all pagans, those who do not believe in God, those who do not want to believe in God, and we're bathing them in his mercy because his passion and his zeal, when we bathe him, when we bathe them in his mercy, it comforted his heart during the passion. And he spoke that to her in, in her diary. Mm-hmm. And it's not it's not that we're bringing to him each of those days, you know, this type of bad people, this type no. of, no, no, no. It's about these are people he loves. These are souls mm-hmm. he longs for. These are souls he died for. And so each day we're bringing a different group of them to him. And, and you would think, well, how is that? How could that possibly be consoling him if he, when he's hanging on the cross, to think about people who don't even believe in God? But these are some of the souls he would die for. Well, he believes in them. That's they right. They may not believe in him, but he created them, and he believes in them. He wants them in his home in heaven. That's what he wants. I just want to read the prayer today for that. Well, prayer. I was going to say when we go into our prayer time, you wanna, Jean, we let's can do pray. that just the one section of the chaplet and ladies if you want to know more Mm -hmm. you can go to divinemercy.org that's right online that's right and find the novena the chaplet information about saint faustina all of that you can find at divinemercy.org but let's go ahead and and offer these prayers yes we're going to pray for today let's let's begin this will just be one part of the chaplet okay So we'll sanctify our time together in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we bring to you today, and I believe we're on day five of the uh, Novena, of what the prayer is today and who everybody across the world that is praying the Divine Mercy Novena, we're all in unity praying this prayer. And today's prayer is for pagans. Jesus says, today bring to me the pagans and those who do not know me yet. I was thinking also of them during my bitter passion, and their future zeal comforted me. Let me say that again. Their future zeal Mm. comforted me. Immense them, immerse them in the ocean of my mercy. Most compassionate Jesus, you are the light of the whole world. Receive into the abode of your most compassionate heart the souls of pagans who as yet do not know you. Let the rays of your grace enlighten them, that they too, together with us, may extol your wonderful mercy. And do not let them escape from the abode which is your most compassionate heart. May the light of your love enlighten the souls in darkness. Grant that these souls will know you and together with us, praise your mercy. Eternal Father, turn your merciful gaze upon the souls of pagans and of those who as yet do not know you, but who are enclosed in the most compassionate heart of Jesus. Draw them to the light of the gospel. These souls do not know what great happiness is to love you. Grant that they too may extol the generosity of your mercy for endless ages. Lord, we want to thank you for the gift of St. Faustina and her yes 
to answering the call to be her secretary, your secretary of mercy. I thank you for the grace that you're bestowing upon the world at this moment, in this time, in this week, in this Easter octave of flood grace floodgates of mercy and love being poured into every heart. I thank you that we are coming together as a world, praying in unison for the whole world, those that know you and those that don't, the religious, babies, children. We're praying for everybody over these next few days. Lord, we thank you for the graces that you're pouring into our hearts. We thank you for where you're making crooked paths straight. We thank you that we are going to live in this beautiful resurrected life of new beginnings and new hope. We thank you, Lord, for our great faith and for your gift to us, your gift of your son. I thank you, Lord, that he loves us so much that he's still making divine appearances in our modern day to St. Faustina, and to other mystics. We thank you, Lord, that the gospel's fully alive, and we praise you. And we offer these prayers in union with our Blessed Mother, and we ask for a mother's share to fall on us of her joy, Mm. of her resurrection joy. As we pray, Hail Mary, full Full of grace, grace, the Lord Lord is is with thee. thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah! Yes, ladies! (laughs) Next Wednesday at 5 o'clock will be a new joyful echo, and we will still be in the Easter season. Yes, get to Divine Mercy Mass on Sunday. Yes, yes, yes. And confession. (laughs) Yay!